Okay, next up here is State Rep. Orlando Ramos from Springfield, who also represents a chunk of Chicopee. Thank you, Orlando, for consenting to drop by here. Thank you for having me. Okay, so I'm asking you basically the same questions I've asked other members of the delegation, which is we're heading back to business in the fall. Mm -hmm. What do you see as the issues that are most important to you that you really want to have addressed here? Well, I think number one is uh, we have to make sure that we get a handle on the the COVID-19 situation. Um, you know that uh, the future of our, our economy and the future of our our um, you know businesses and and schools that really depends on what the COVID pandemic looks like um, in in the months coming up, and so we want to make sure that we're doing everything that we can to reduce the number of cases and to increase the number of uh, people who are vaccinated and um, incentivize you know uh, folks to uh, uh, to help you know um, reduce the numbers and. Um, and then once we, we do that, then we can talk about how we're going to uh, contribute towards rebuilding our economy. And with the amount of money that we have coming down from the federal government to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the city of Springfield, and Chicopee, uh, we want to make sure that we're able to utilize those funds to help businesses recover, to help put people back to work. Um, it's a lot of money, and it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to spend this, this sort of money on economic development, job creation, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so we want to make sure that we get it right. Okay, there's a lot of concern here in Hamden County about our vaccination rates, a lot of concern also about our COVID rates. A lot of the people are saying that younger people are not getting the vaccine, people who are old enough to get the vaccine, but they're not getting it. Is there anything that you think that we should be doing differently um, as a member of the general court to try to encourage people to get vaccinated at this point, particularly in Hamden County? Yeah, I think education is the key. You know, I'm I'm not really a fan of... uh of um, um, implementing any sort of uh, penalty for, for people who are uh, vaccinated or, or unvaccinated. I'm not in favor of um, mandating vaccinations or anything like that. I think the, the key is education. You know, we just have to continue to educate people and um, just uh, counter all of the myths and, and, and worries that are out there um, associated with the, with the vaccine. Um, and once we, once we do that, once people start getting more and more comfortable with um, uh, with the vaccine itself, and we have to remember that this isn't this isn't a phenomenon either. I mean, this is the first time. This is the first vaccine that's ever existed in in, in our history, right? We, uh, all of us, uh, growing up as as children, are required to get certain vaccines in order to go to school, um, and that was the way that we were able to eradicate and eliminate some some of the uh, um, diseases of the past. Um, so you know, once people realize that, and they realize that this is the how we got here uh, in the first place, where we're, we're we have a society that is free of polio and, and diseases uh, uh, like that, um, I think more and more people are going to feel comfortable taking the vaccine. Okay, so you folks in the legislature are sort of debating. I think debating is a good neutral verb with Governor Baker about how recovery money ought to be spent. Mm-hmm. How do you think recovery money ought to be spent on the statewide level? And, of course, you are still a Springfield City Councilor, so yep. there's also the debate within the city about how ARPA money ought to be spent. Yes. What are your viewpoints on it? Well, I think one of the most important parts of uh, the criteria in which the money can be spent that I have been looking at and will be paying close attention to is the fact that there is a, uh, a criteria that, that um, allows us to spend some of these funds on uh, racial equity. And, uh, you know, when you look at historically um, uh, the, the, the wealth gap and the income gap that exists, in both in the Commonwealth and, and the, the country overall, um, and you look at the laws of the past uh, that have been, that continue to haunt us today, and I made this argument before, legislation helped create the income and wealth gap. And so we have to make sure that we use legislation in order to close the income and wealth gap. And this is an opportunity for us to be able to do that. So I would love to see uh, money uh, uh, dedicated towards helping close that gap. Um, some examples that I would give is, you know, we, we should um, set aside some money for first-time homeowners um, who have not had the opportunity to buy a home in the traditional way. Um, to, uh, you know, black and brown folks have, uh, been, have historically, um, you know, purchased property and owned property at a much lower rate compared to non-minorities. And there are reasons for that, right? You look at the past legislation, um, and and also uh, businesses. You know, start startup businesses. You know, one of the things that um, one of the arguments that I've been making at the state level and at the local level is that there there you need money to you need money to make money, right? In order to start a business, you have to have money. 
Unfortunately, there isn't a lot of generational wealth in black and brown communities. And so here's an opportunity for us to close that gap and to offer um, uh, some startup money for black and brown entrepreneurs uh, to help build them build wealth within black and brown communities. And I think that that's an important key that um, I'm going to be looking for. Thank you, sir. Thanks for coming by. Always a pleasure to speak to you. Thank you, Orlando. Thank you.